Hello, we are students from the Joseph Rantry School in the city of York in the UK. We are talking to you today as we prepare for our very own Mini Earth Summit at our school. It's called the Joe Rio Earth Summit and it takes place on Thursday 21st of June. We timed it for this date because even though it is a Mini Earth Summit, we want it to have a major impact. We don't just want to reach out to people in our school and in York. We want to reach out to everybody all around the world and to tell you what we children want for our future. When you're a young person, lots of people, mainly adults, talk to you about your future. They usually talk about exams and grades and getting into university, into college. The sort of things that they had to worry about when they were our age. But the word future holds a heavy meaning to me. I don't only have to worry about getting into university, about paying the fees, about getting a job, all of which are harder now than ever before, I also have to worry about the very air I breathe. At this conference, you ask us to describe the future we want. In my life, in my future, I want to breathe in and smell flowers and plants, not pollution and the stench of traffic fumes. I want to look at the countryside and take in its beauty, not silently calculate how long it's got left. I want to lie down on green grass and stare up into a sheer blue sky and see white clouds, not dark ones of grey coming from power stations, spewing their greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Do those dreams sound familiar? In 1992, a girl called Seven Suzuki, who was the same age as we are now, stood up and told the Rio conference her fears about the poisoning of the natural environment that she was witnessing even then. She spoke with passion and anger about poverty, injustice, conflict and inequality. She pleaded with you adults to change your ways. I thought you would have wanted to prove her wrong, that you would have tried to improve things. And yes, some things are better. The hole in the ozone layer is going because laws were passed to stop CFCs. The fair trade movement means some small farmers at least are getting a decent pay. So we know we can fix things. Mostly, all that has happened since then has proved Seven right. Our world is still being destroyed at an astonishing rate. Scientists have shown that we are now changing the way our Earth develops more than nature is. That means that we are in charge of what happens. If we make the wrong decision, it will change the way generations live and how many species we have left. Ten years ago, animal species were becoming extinct at the rate of three an hour. Now I dread to think of the figures. As species are made extinct, it changes the food chains. For example, in our oceans, sharks are suffering due to the destructive practice of shark finning. Because sharks are at the apex of the food chain, the entire ocean ecosystem is being affected. My purpose, my reason for speaking to you today, is to say that the one thing that is the cause of the world's current stress is human arrogance. We throw away resources we cannot replace. We destroy things we could never hope to bring back and we cause wounds that might never heal. More than 20% of our oxygen comes from the trees in the Amazon. Tropical rainforests are home to more than half of the world's plant species and many rainforest plants produce life-saving medicines. And yet we cast this natural wealth aside the cheap value of timber and land for cattle to graze. We have to stop before it's too late. People throw around terms like eco-friendly and sustainable, but do they really mean that? It's one thing to say something, but another entirely to do it. They say, waste not, want not, but we waste so much and we still want more. What's done is done to the world, and um, we will not be able to mend it. But what people do not realise is that it's not too late to help the earth. It may be soon though. I feel so sorry for the people around the globe who have to sit and watch their families starve to death. Imagine that, watching your own children die from lack of food and not being able to do anything about it. They need our help, now. They can't wait much longer. If those children could have the same opportunities that I've had, not just the honour of speaking to you, but having a good roof to sleep under, clean water to drink, and an education, they'd take it with open arms but they have had it taken away from them by droughts and their crops dying as a result of climate change. 
Some people don't like their children knowing about global warming and just say everything's going to be alright. Well, if we don't take drastic action and fast, we'll not be alright. So please, when you go home, ask yourself, what can I do to make my grandchildren proud of me? After all, what environment do you want them to live in? Children and youth make up one of the nine major groups identified in the last Rio Earth Summit in the global action that emerged called Agenda 21. Agenda 21 recognises that youth comprise nearly 30% of the world's population and that the involvement of young people in environment and decision making is critical to the long-term success of its goals. Your conference this week is encouraging children to join you in working out a sustainable future for us all and we're here to do just that. We've told you what we want for our future and what we want you adults in charge to do about it. But we are not just leaving it to you. This is my future and I want to be part of its development and make it my own. That's why I'm doing this and it's why we, the Jorios, as we call ourselves, are organising our own Earth Summit here in York. If you act locally, you can change globally and we will be challenging our local leaders and politicians in debate and making our own Joe Rio de declaration by launching a sustainable agenda for the Joseph Roundtree School. Most importantly, we will be asking every single person that attends to make personal pledges to change their lives in some small ways. We've calculated that if everyone who comes to our summit sticks to their pledges for a whole year, we could save enough oil to fill 432 car engines, enough electricity to power one UK family home, enough CO2 to fly more than halfway to Rio, and enough water to fill one and a half Olympic swimming pools. A common theme when we wrote our speeches to this was how unthinkably scary the future is for children. Some people are scared, they shut down, they give up, they don't act, but by doing this, we are facing our fears. We are doing something, something that will make a difference. We have been working towards our summit for six months, and that's just the start of what we want to achieve for ourselves, for our school and for our community. If all schools and colleges and towns and cities and villages and parishes around the world did the same, just think about what we could do. But it needs businesses and organisations and governments to do the same. We can have the future we want instead of the nightmares that stalk us. It's okay to be wrong. We are all human. We make mistakes. But it takes brave, strong leaders to admit their mistakes and sort them out. Will you be those leaders for us now? We have the will and you have the power. We can't get it wrong again. Not this time. We are Hannah, Aaron, Molly, Rebecca, Henry James, Phoebe, Georgie and Emily. This speech has been delivered with the help of the Stockholm Environment Institute. Thank you for listening.